The HTC One M8 was one of my favorite devices of 2014. It was launched in a very neat way as well, launching in stores the same day it was debuted to the media and the world. It had taken the things HTC had learned from the first generation M7 and improved on almost every single detail. And I think even with one year of time passing, the HTC One M8 is as relevant as it can be, especially now with the new M9 that is launching, the M8 could be found for a much smaller amount of money. So let's take a look back at the One M8 and see what it was all about and how well it has aged since. The HTC One M8 was a huge upgrade from the much beloved One M7. It grew in size, up from a 4.7 inch display to a 5 inch display. It was packed with faster specs, a larger battery, and it was all wrapped up in a more premium materials which included a bump from 70 to 90% of aluminum and steel. Overall, HTC nailed the One M8 in the aesthetics departments. Reviewers and consumers alike loved the brand new construction and build. Another thing we loved was its 5 inch display. It was a super LCD 3 IPS display, nothing too fancy, but it proved to be one of the best color accurate displays of the year, and to this day, I still view the HTC One M8 display as one of the best around. Hardware-wise, we had a 2.3 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 801 chip, 2 GB of RAM, and the Adreno 330 GPU. Also, the battery size was bumped up from 2300 mAh to 2600 mAh. Software-wise, the HTC One M8 was packed with Android 4.4.2 KitKat at launch, but since then has been upgraded to Android 5.0. Lollipop on a few of the available models, but sadly this Verizon wireless model is still running KitKat. HEC Sense 6.0 also debuted with the HEC One M8, overall bringing a redesign and performance bump to Sense 5.0. Everything had a slight change from color schemes to added new functionalities. It was also dialed back from HEC Sense 5.0 in some areas and brought some new features like double tap to wake, which proved very useful considering the wake button was located on the top right corner. The the software experience itself was impeccable. It was fast, it was smooth, very efficient to my eye. The only thing that did bother me was blank feed, and only because I never found it very useful to myself, but thankfully it is very easy to disable it. Another huge piece to the HTC One M8 was their signature boom sound speakers. They made a much welcomed return on the HTC One M8 with larger and better sounding speakers, and to this day, it's still the best sounding phone around. Next piece of the HTC One M8 revolved around its camera camera, especially the second sensor above the camera. This is what people call a depth sensor. It's supposed to sense the range of objects, so with little software magic, you can actually adjust the focus after taking your picture. While it was a neat idea, it really didn't address the primary issue of the One M7's camera, which was its poor resolution. Only being 4 megapixels, the images were always too fuzzy and didn't have that much detail. Also, since the sensor was only 4 megapixels, 1080p video was the max resolution in a year where almost all Android flagships had UHD or 4K video recording, which requires an 8 megapixel sensor. So with all of this in mind, the HTC One M8 as a whole was a major success. It looked the part, it felt the part, and it ran like it should have. And now you can find an HTC One M8 for a lot less money than before. To me, the HTC One M8 is still very relevant. Yes, you'll have to live with the camera, but as a phone, it's spectacular. The battery life is great, the screen is great, and it still looks fantastic. So if you were considering picking one of these up, it's definitely still a good choice. If not, the HTC One M9 is literally right around the corner. So make sure to look out for it on this channel, say sometime in the next 24 hours. So make sure to leave this video a thumbs up. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.